Om Jnana Timirandhasya Jnana Jnana Shalakaya Chakshura Nilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Translation, previously being empowered by providence, you defeated a great number of such followers of Lord Vishnu. <coughs> but today those same followers, having defeated us, are roaring in jubilation like lions. Report, Bhagavad Gita mentions five causes of defeat or victory. Of these five, daiva, providence is the most powerful. Nachat daivat parang balam. Bali Maharaj knew the secret of how he had formerly been victorious because providence was in his favor. Now, since that same providence was not in his favor, there was no possibility of his victory. Thus, he very intelligently forbade his associates to fight. Bali Maharaj is talking about providence, <laughs> otherwise known as fate or destiny or in modern English misusage or misunderstanding of the word karma. It's my karma. I bang my head against the wall accidentally. It's my karma. Misuse of the word because it should be karma fall. It's the result of my previous activity. If you deliberately bang your head against, then you could say it's karma. Karma means work, and karma fal means the result of the work. So these different words are there, destiny, fate, providence. It's an often asked question, well, if our fate is fixed, then what's the use of trying for anything? Well, when God wants me to surrender to him, then I shall surrender to him. Rascal, who says that. He wants us to surrender, but we don't want to. And we blame it on him. Here the word Sanskrit, daiva, means that which is going on under the direction of the Supreme Lord. And daiva means all the various demigods also. They are part of the team. Karmana daiva netrena jantur deho according to one's activities and under the supervision of the Supreme Lord and his representatives, the demigods, the living being gets a certain kind of body. So then we go to the astrologer or the palm reader and he says, this will happen, that will happen. And if he's at all competent, then it should be true. Otherwise, what's the use of them being an astrologer? They should be able to see at least certain patterns. So people think, well, oh, that's, uh, that's fixed, so what's the use of endeavoring in any way if it's all fixed? But it's not all fixed. There's free will also. Certain things are fixed, but within that, there's scope for movement also. Just like a cow may be tied, may be tethered up. So if it's a 20 meter rope, then the cow has 20 meters to move it. And left alone in the field. They don't do this in England. They put all the cows in a paddock inside a fenced area. But it's common in other countries that they put the put the post into the ground. What's it called? Stake. Stake, yeah. And tie the cow to it. And then they just go away. And the cow can move around this way, that way, can walk closer to the stake, further away. And stand up, lie down. He has, the cow has some independence what to do within a 20 meter radius. And that's all. So it can jump up in the air if it likes. You don't see cows do that much. <laughs> it can sit down. It can <laughs> chew its cud, chew the grass if there's any there. 
like this. So some freedom is there. Now the idea that, well, we're completely, because of my karma, as we say, then I'm, I'm forced to do it this way. This is an illogical or a foolish idea. Because if, if you are now suffering or enjoy, so-called enjoying karmic reactions for activities that we did in a previous life, then that should be because in the previous life we, we chose to act in such a way and therefore we're now getting the results. So there must have been some choice to have made the activities by which we get the reward or punishment. It's not that in the previous life we had some choice and in this life we're completely... Uh, completely, what's the word? Puppets on a string. We're controlled, that's the word. We're completely controlled, we have no choice. Fate is there, it is very powerful. But how we respond to the various uh, pushings or the, the various shapings of our fate, that determines our future. Otherwise, we're machines. We're, or we're, we're like figures in a cartoon. We have no... Actually, our consciousness, it's, it's meaningless. The figure in a cartoon moves here and there, jumps up and down, but it's, it's not really a person. It may appear to be. So if we have no choice... Then we no, Then our existence is no more meaningful than that of a figure in a cartoon. So we we have choice, just like you can get on an airplane, and once you're on it, you have no choice but to fly where it's flying. But within the plane, you can <coughs> sit down and go to sleep, or you can watch the movie if they're showing one. <coughs> you can purchase things from the off off duty for instance. There are so many things that you, that you can do, but you are forced to be on the plane until it reaches its destination. Or if it happens to blow up in midair, you don't have any choice over that. So you are controlled to a large extent. If you're sitting on the plane, you think, well, I'd rather be lying on a beach somewhere, but you can't do it. And you, can't, you can't start to think about doing it, or you can't actually actuate that until you get off the plane. So to a large extent we are controlled, but we also have a good measure of independence, just like what you do on the plane can affect your future to a greater or lesser extent. If you're very tired and you take some rest on the plane, then say you're going to a business meeting at the other end, you might be able to uh, be more alert and sharp or if you study the different business prospects, or you might meet someone on the plane and marry them. What you do can, it can affect your future. Or if you get drunk and start hitting people, then there's a good chance you'll be arrested when you get off the plane. They'll have the police waiting for you. So there is choice. There, there is fate and there is choice also. But fate is very powerful. It's, and nevertheless, karmani nirdahati kintu bhakti bhajam. Daiva means the Supreme Lord, Deva. The Supreme Lord, under whose direction this is all going on, so he can change that. He can change our supposed fate. Just like yesterday was the anniversary of Srila Prabhupada's arriving in America. On the way to America, on the ship, Prabhupada had two heart attacks. And he said that actually that was supposed to be my time finished, but Krishna gave extra time. 
because he had some extra work to do. So Krishna can change it all. That's stated in Shastra, that if you clap your hands in the arati, You didn't need to do that because you're already chanting Hare Krishna. The idea is that your fate changes. All your sinful reactions fly away, just like clapping your hands under a tree and all the birds fly away. So anyway, you're already chanting Hare Krishna. But it changes. Now, superficially it might seem that your fate it gets worse. Many people say that, that, well, I, I took to Krishna Conscious to get rid of all my problems. I got more problems. It may be. It may seem like that. But that is explained that Krishna just to, he sees his devotee, he wants his devotee to come to him. One who is very merciful to. People think, oh, if God is merciful to me, he will give me lots of money. But if he's more merciful, he may take away whatever you have. Because, seeing that he doesn't have anything left, then his relatives who love him so much, suddenly... They don't, he doesn't seem to be such a nice person anymore. We used to love him. He was so nice to us. He used to buy us ice creams and cars and didn't got anything to give us. So the love, the love diminishes pretty soon. Fair weather friends. You find who's got money has got friends. In Thai, where if you Know anything? You mean in Thailand, Sanatan? Yeah. It's uh, very prominent in Thailand. It's uh, land of enjoying sex. I wasn't. <laughs> All right, I didn't say you were. <laughs> I was there also. I also didn't go for this. <laughs> we used to print our books there in the in the printers. They had receipts like for a bar, and it would say food, wine, girl. <laughs> it's like, it's all above board. It's not considered socially reprehensible to be a prostitute. It's just another way of making a living. So anyway, in Thai, there's a saying, I uh, hope there's no Thai people here, because it's a long time, I've been out of touch for a long time. But it's, mi nun mi pu yin, which means, if you've got money, you've got a woman. And if you don't, you don't. <laughs> That's so. Krishna takes away the money of those who <coughs> want to serve him. In Bengali, they they put it: "Jai Mare Kare Ash Tare Kare Sarvanash." Whoever desires me, I smash them, wreck them. <laughs> Destroy them. <laughs> Material. So it may be, we think, oh, what's going on? I was worshipping Krishna. I thought life would be better, but it's, it's getting worse and worse. Look at Bali Maharaj. He's such an such, uh, honest devotee. And Krishna just humiliated him. Took away everything he had, all the effort. For, I mean, it wasn't just that Bali Maharaj and the demons, they were just sitting around, nothing to do. What, what should we do today? Okay, let's go and conquer the heavenly king. Okay, let's go. It wasn't like that. Obviously, they did a lot of preparation and planning and uh, chanting mantras. And, and it wasn't just by chance. You don't win battles by by chance alone. It may be here, Nacha Daivat Parambala, but the Daiva is very strong, but there's another factor also. Nahi suktasya singhasya pravishante mukhe mrigam That you also have to do some work. Well, it's my 
You know that? that the, the lion is very powerful, but it's not that he's just lying down asleep in the forest and the deer comes up to him and says, Would you like to eat me? It doesn't happen like that. He has to get up and catch it. So one has to work also. One has to do something. Fate is there, but one's endeavor is uh, there also. Hmm. But uh, we might find that things get apparently worse. You think, why? Why is that? The devotee sees everything as Krishna's mercy. Tatenu kampan su samikshamana upunjana ibadna kutam vipa kangri bhag. Tafubi aviditanda maste jiveta yo mukti pade sadaya bhag. The devotee who is eligible for entering the spiritual world is thus eligible because of his complete dependence on Krishna. Full surrender. What is the symptom of full surrender? That you think whatever happens, that is Krishna's mercy. It's my endeavor to endeavor in his service, but the result is in his hands. And if I have to suffer in so many ways, that is his mercy on me for my sinful reactions. The devotee thinks, actually I should be suffering more. He's so kind to me that he's only giving me this little reaction. Actually, I I deserve much more. So that is the fact that it, it may things may become apparently more difficult for a devotee. For one reason is that hmm, Krishna wants to by showing him the but by clearly showing the nasty face of material nature, the devotee becomes detached from from it. Another reason is that Krishna, as a token, may all the so many sinful reactions may be there, already waiting for millions of lifetimes. You may think life is pretty bad in London in. 2006, but we have millions of lifetimes ahead of similar suffering. It's already lined up. And what we're doing is lining up more and more. But Krishna Karmani near the Hatikin Kitu Bhakti Bhajan. He reduces that. He gives, just in a few years, he, he reduces all that and just makes it a little bit. So we become free from that. So, a devotee, he sees everything. In, of course, this requires to be advanced devotee. It's not very easy for a less advanced devotee to see this, to accept this. But a more advanced devotee sees that everything is in Krishna's hands. That doesn't mean that he doesn't endeavor. He tries his best to serve Krishna. But ultimately, I am not the doer. As long as we're thinking, I am the doer. I am preaching. I am distributing books. If we think like that, every book distributor knows. As soon as we think, I am distributing books, then we can't distribute. All of a sudden, we meet so many demons. And as soon as we, as soon as we start think, praying to Krishna, Oh, Krishna, make me your instrument. Then again, the books go out. Or maybe not also, because that's that's up to Krishna. So dependence, this is the meaning of Sharanagati. We were reading yesterday Prabhupada's prayer that I'm I've come like a puppet, you are the string puller. And then to be a puppet of Krishna that is a glorious position that Krishna will directly pull our strings. Otherwise, you've, you've seen the picture maybe in the old edition of Bhagavad Gita, they used to have the picture of the three modes of material nature. So, we think we are independent, but actually we are prakriti kriyamana ni gunai karma ni sarvasana. 
What's the next line? Ahankara. Vimudhatma. Vimudhatma. Big fool. Kartaham iti manute. I am the doer. When the doing is done by the modes of nature. Again, this doesn't mean that we are wholly controlled, but we, we have a desire. We can choose to act in this way or that way, but whether it actually fructifies or if it does fructify what we decide to do, that is all being enacted by the modes of nature. We can't actually do it. I just scratched my ear, right? You all saw that? Did I? Did I scratch my ear or didn't I? Well, I did. <laughs> this is not a Zen Buddhist course. <laughs> but I was only able to do so because the material energy which works under the direction of Krishna allows us to do so. We take it for granted that I can move my hands and fingers and that, but it, the power can be taken away at any time. I had this experience once on a cold morning in the winter in Gujarat. I woke up and I couldn't move. couldn't move my whole right arm. I couldn't, couldn't brush my teeth or anything. Not with my right hand, I do it with my left hand. So I just took it, you take it for granted, you get up in the morning and Oh, well, like this, but I couldn't. Just, just like this, I couldn't, couldn't move it at all. It's just completely stiff. So we take it for granted that we can do this and that, move our hands here and there, and everything else too. I'm going to Heathrow Airport today. Hmm, maybe planning to, but don't know. You never know. You never, it might not even be a Heathrow airport by the time I get there. You never know. <laughs> and there are plenty of people in this, well, not at least some people, who would be quite happy that there's no more Heathrow airport. So there, I'm, you know, I might not be in this body up till that time. So that's why, actually in Islam, they say, Inshallah, I shall go to the airport today, inshallah, if Allah so desires. Not that I will go. You may say, I'm planning to go. But it may not be. It depends on Him. If Krishna so desires, we used to pray that. For Prabhupada. Prabhupada allowed, we could say this prayer. My dear Lord Krishna, if you so desire, please give us Srila Prabhupada. Everything is in Krishna's hands. So fate is very powerful and you can have your chat read and see, this may happen, that may happen. And we see even for devotees, what is predicted will probably come true if you have a fairly decent astrologer or the, the tendencies may be there. But how it happens is different for devotees and different for non-devotees. That means that if a devotee has to apparently suffer sickness, actually a devotee never suffers sickness, or actually, even, even a non-devotee never suffers sickness. But a devotee doesn't suffer. We should be careful when we see devotee. Oh, this devotee suffering so much, so sick. But Vrindavan Das Thakur warns us that if you see a devotee apparently suffering, you should know that he's never removed from his position of transcendental bliss. There may appear to suffer. So a devotee may have some suffering but or sickness, but in Vaishnavochit Bhasha or in the manner of talking that is suitable for Vaishnavas, we don't say that that oh, this devotee is sick. 
in the, of course in English we say like that, but but it should be said that he is enacting the pastime of being sick. It's all we shouldn't think it's it's he's suffering material reaction. But we should understand that this is some pastime for for teaching us. Madhavendra Puri was apparently sick. But that's described that that sickness that was to give his disciples an opportunity to serve him. And see how surrendered they'll be. Ishwar Puri would take out his stool, of course. That's that's just a job here. But in the Vedic culture to touch someone's stool, even a Brahmana's stool, that's only you only the certain caste will do that. And even even the that means lower than Shudra. Bhangi they're called or Mehara and Simbanga. So even others who are lower than Shudras, they won't do that. You can't pay them even. They may be poor, you wouldn't you can't pay them to carry out someone's stool because it's considered just below their dignity. But Ishwara Puri did that. When Madhavendra Puri was exhibiting the pastime of sickness because his dedication to his guru was more than his identification with his bodily prestige. He had no identification with bodily prestige. So a devotee, it may say, he will have sickness, it may be shown in the chat, but that sickness is not it not exactly to be understood as a karmic punishment, but Krishna is giving a test. Krishna is showing how this we should not be attached to this body. So it's not exactly not exactly in the same way that a, a non devotee suffers, apparently suffers. A devotee doesn't suffer. Everything devotee understands that everything is ultimately Krishna's arrangement. The faith that this is Krishna's arrangement, Krishna has some purpose. Krishna is very kind to me, he has some purpose. He's, he's teaching me something, he's arranging for everything. Even if everything apparently goes wrong, even in our preaching, just see Prabhupada, he was making so much endeavor, preaching in India, and sometimes it seemed very hopeful, and then it all dissolved, like his business prospects. It all seemed very hopeful, then it dissolved. And then he's preaching in India, time and again it looked very hopeful, in Jansi it looked very hopeful, and then it all dissolved, and then different. he had different ideas for making magazines. All dissolved. Ultimately, Krishna brought him to America, and even then he had to apparently struggle so much. But Krishna had a plan. Obviously, in retrospect, he could see. And devotees who have been engaged in Krishna consciousness for some years, then they can probably look back and see, oh, that was Krishna's plan. That must have been Krishna's plan that happened like that. It seemed, at the time, it seemed very bad, but then, then you see what happened ultimately. That must have been, it's Krishna's plan for our purification. So a devotee sees Krishna's hand in everything. That, and he also sees that <coughs> we cannot do anything without the will of Krishna. Krishna is certainly helping us. He's helping the non-devotees also, but that's in a different... Then the help comes through a different agency. That comes through the agency of the material energy. But the hand of Krishna is very kind, even though it sometimes may appear to be unkind. But... Krishna, the, the apparent suffering we may have to undergo if we're actually devotees, then that will help us to come to Krishna more quickly. Krishna wants us to come to him quickly. 
Narad Muni to speed up Krishna's Leela, he sometimes goes to Kamsa and say, Hey, you know what? All those innocent cowherders in Goku, they are actually your enemies, the demigods. And they're all, all the demigods are being born all around you. you. This is pretty dangerous. Okay, kill them all. That was his reaction. So Narad Muni apparently acted as a traitor. But he was, he knew that Krishna, he is invincible, unconquerable. So to speed up the goings on, he acted as a provocateur. No one blames, no one has ever blamed Narad Muni. No devotee ever blamed Narad Muni. So this vision now, there were certain court cases against Iskon for how people were mistreated, which is true. But the Krishna conscious vision of that was, was that, well, you can't force people to have that vision, but if they were actually Krishna conscious, they'd say, well, that was Krishna's plan for me also. I deserved that. In the modern age, no one deserves any, no one takes responsibility for anything. I'm, now I'm all screwed up because my parents mistreated me, the school mistreated me. It's all everyone else's fault. You know, the, the blame is always put on someone else. But the blame is on us. Purusha prakriti stohi bhunte prakriti jangunan karanam gunasangosya sadasadhyoni jangmasu. We are in this material world enjoying and suffering the results due to our, what is the cause? Because of our association with the modes of material nature. <coughs> we have made our fate. It's not, you may say, well, the cause is because my father beat me black and blue every day, so therefore I'm a, you know, therefore I'm a murderer. It may be true, but the, the, there are several causes. In anything, there are several causes. What is the cause of a clay pot? Well, the clay is one cause. The potter is another cause. The potter's family is another cause because he has to make money to support them. The people who desire to use the pot is another cause. So there are various causes. So the father beating you black and blue may be one cause, but it's but ultimately we are responsible. We, no one came and said, now you murder this person. But we chose to do that. We may be in a disadvantage, we say maybe a disadvantaged position, but we have to take responsibility. The legal system may seem other, may say otherwise, but the laws of nature are going on regardless of the concocted laws made by the human society. So this Krishna conscious means to see Krishna as the cause of all causes. Understanding cause and effect. This is science. Practically, the, the, <coughs> what is science? It means to see cause and effect. So Krishna conscious is the ultimate science to see cause and effect. It's quite complex. What is the cause of, just like there's this, uh, what they call Islamic terrorism. Although, those who are called Islamic terrorists, they don't call it terrorism. They call it jihadi or whatever they want to call it, sacred war. They have a different <coughs> outlook on it. So what is the cause of that? So you could say, well, the cause is that they're just all wrong, or you can say the cause is the the uh, they don't want to they don't want to be Americanized. Uh, historical causes. If you look at the conflict in Israel, what are the historical causes? How the Palestinians were booted out of their country, and so you can see so many causes. It's very complex. 
But ultimately, the suffering we experience in this material world, every one of us, is because we chose to forget Krishna. And then we perform so many activities, and each activity brings uh, a result, and it goes on. It's a great, great chain. And we try to sort it out. We try to sort out all our problems one by one. Go for psychological counseling, and then we'll have a different system of government, and then we'll have different persons in government, and we have to solve our health problems, you have to go jogging, you have to take vitamin E tablets. There is, every, it's so, everything we do practically is an attempt to over, overcome all our innumerable problems one by one. It'll never work. Even if we could solve all our problems, there's still there'd be one major problem, it's called the death problem. <laughs> That everything now it's very nice. There's no more Islamic terrorists. They all became. They all woke up one day and said, "Actually, this isn't very good. I think I'll stop being a terrorist, and we'll uh, instead we'll put flowers in our hair and become hippies, and be nice and smile and say peace, man." So the terrorists. There's no more terrorism, and there's no more pollution. Can't imagine how they're going to do that one. And uh, there's unlimited supply of vitamin E tablets. <laughs> and everything's wonderful. But it's just one problem. You have to die. So the solution to all problems is don't die. Chant Hare Krishna. Anyway, I'm going to get a reaction for this in two minutes over time. <laughs> Better not make more bad karma here. Yeah. Okay, please forgive me. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Oh, guys, to Srila Prabhupada. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. So please go and interfere with everyone's. karmic reactions by giving them Prabhupada's books. Change their life.